Hello everyone, I'm Yu Liang Cao, the third year PhD student advised by Dr. Dong Dong. Today, I'm going to talk about a switching transition analysis and optimization for a CLLC DC transformer, also abbreviated as the DCX. Well, the bidirectional DC-DC converter exists everywhere in our life and has been widely used in many applications, such as in EV charging system, hybrid electric propulsion system, or the energy storage system. An EV charger example of, was given in this page, and the spec is shown on the right-hand side. To meet the battery voltage and achieve high efficiency and density, we have presented a partial power converter in the last year CPAS conference. In the last year CPAS conference, the core concept of the partial power converter is to push the majority power through the HVDCX and only partial power will go through the LVDCX. Since just a partial power will be processed to regulate the output voltage, the converter can achieve very high efficiency. The peak efficiency is mainly determined by the majority power loop as shown on the left. Due to the low circulating current and the full range ZVS, the CLLC resonant converter has been adopted as the HVDCX. Compared with the traditional two-stage topology, partial power converter has many merits as shown on the right. And the spec is also shown at this page. More details and the previous recording can be found in bottom link. To achieve high efficiency, the key point is to desire a high efficiency CLLC DCX as shown on the right, because majority power will go through it. The requirements of the DCX are shown on the right bottom, such as the bidirectional power flow, the open loop control, constant and low independent voltage gain, and the full range of the soft switching. Two control methods for CLLC DCX will be discussed in this page. The first method is called the passive rectifier which means only the primary side has the gate signals and the secondary side works as the passive rectifier. To reduce the conduction loss caused by the current through the body diodes during the daytime, synchronized rectification can be adopted by replacing the diodes with the device channels. However, an extra ZCD circuit is required in SR control. In addition, it should be noted that the ZCD is hard to implement in high voltage application such as the voltage larger than the 150 volts. To address these problems in passive rectifier, a natural bidirectional modulation has been adopted in recently, with which the driving signals of the primary side and the secondary side are identical. Since this modulation has many different names in the literature, such as the dual active control, active rectification, and the sync turn on and turn off modulation. This presentation gives it a name as the dual active synchronization modulation. Compared with the passive rectifier, DAS modulation has many merits, such as the no extra ZCD circuit and a natural bidirectional operation. And thus, this presentation will only focus on the DAS modulation and give a comprehensive analysis including the ZVS transition and daytime loss. With DAS modulation, switch S1, 4, 5, and 8 will share the same gate signal. The thrust ratio N is selected according to the voltage transformer ratio between the two DC bus voltages, the VDC HV and the VDC LV. The device output cap of both sides are represented as the COSS HV and COSS LV, and then the resonant cap CRHV and CRLV are selected to achieve the resonant frequency according to the leakage inductance LRHV and LRLV. In order to simplify the circuit and make a direct comparison between two sides, the LV side circuit is referred to the HV side with the thrust ratio N as shown at the left bottom. The LV side parameters are transformed as shown on the right, including the voltages, currents, and LC components. In this page, the current and the voltage waveforms are plotted in one cycle as shown on the right. Half switching cycle can be decomposed of two intervals. From T0 to T1, 
the CLC-DCX operates in power transfer interval, and the rear power is transferred from the HV side to the LV side. From T1 to T2, the CLC-DCX operates in ZVS transition interval. In this interval, ZVS should be achieved at both sides. To make sure both sides ZVS start at the same time, at T1, the direction of current IHV and ITLV should be designed as shown on the top. If the current reference direction is defined from the left to right, the first design criteria requires the current IHV in positive and ITLV in negative. And then, the zoomed-in waveform from T1 to T2 are shown on the right. If the first criteria is achieved, the current IHV is in positive and ITLV is in negative. Both sides will start the ZVS transition at the same time at T1. In addition, if both sides ZVS transition can end up at T2, the sync ZVS transition will be achieved because the both sides ZVS start and end at the same time. The merits of the sync ZVS transition is shown on the right, such as the constant voltage gain and no dead time loss, ZVS achieved with the minimum dead time, small current raining, natural bidirectional power flow, and no ZCD circuit required. Before discussing how to design the ZVS and up at the same time, I will first introduce two examples without the first criteria. If current IHV and ITLV are both positive as shown in the circular diagram, both sides ZVS can start at the same time because the voltages VDSTLV will be clamped until the current ITLV becomes zero at TA. The drawbacks of this transition are shown on the left bottom. Firstly, the downtime loss will be generated because the current ITLV will go through the device body diode during T1 to TA. In addition, since this current is not used to charge and discharge the output cap, the COSS TLV, the partial ZVS of LV side will happen at T2. Finally, compared with the sync ZVS transition, this transition will have large current reading because two sides ZVS are not synchronized. Example is when the currents IHV and ITLV are both negative. Following the similar analysis, the voltage VDSHV will be clamped at T1 until the IHV becomes zero. And thus, both sides ZVS cannot begin at the same time. The drawbacks are also shown on the left bottom. The dead time loss at HV side is generated because IHV will go through the body diode. In addition, the partial ZVS and the large current reading will also occur in this example. Let's go back to the sync ZVS transition. The first design criteria gives the requirement of current direction at T1, and it can make sure both sides ZVS start at the same time. So the next question is how to make sure that both sides ZVS end up at the same time. Let's consider the zero load situation first. In this case, current IHV and ITLV will become the splitting magnetizing currents dedicated to achieve the ZVS at both sides. During the dead time T1 to T2, they can be assumed as constant and follow the distribution of device output cap. And then, since IHV is positive and ITLV is negative, the first design criteria is achieved naturally at zero load situation. And thus, both sides ZVS will begin at the same time. The electric charge QHV and QTLV for both sides can be derived by current times TD. The changing rate for both sides voltages can be expressed as the delta Q divided by output cap. As discussed before, 
since the splitting magnetizing currents follow the distribution of output cap, the changing rate for both sides VDS should be the same. Since the ZVS start simultaneously and changing the rate for both sides VDS are identical, the ZVS transition will end up at the same time. Since current winning doesn't exist at no load, the VDS waveforms on both sides are overlapped. To make sure both sides ZVS end up simultaneously, the second design criteria requires the distribution of electric charge should follow the device output cap value. At a zero load, since the second design criteria is achieved automatically, the sync ZVS transition can be achieved naturally. To design the sync ZVS transition with a certain load, current decomposition should be explained first. With a given load, the total current can be decomposed into two parts, the resonant current, which is used to transfer in the real power, and the splitting magnetizing current, which are dedicated to realizing the ZVS. During the T0 to T1, the resonant current is transferring the real power, and during the daytime from T1 to T2, the resonant current becomes the current reading caused by the resonance between the leakage inductance and output cap. When we first zoom in the splitting magnetizing current during the daytime, as discussed before, at a zero load situation, the magnetizing current distribution follows the value of output cap, and the sync ZVS can be achieved naturally with the two design criteria. As for the resonant current during the daytime, the current reading frequency is determined by the leakage inductance and device output capacitance. The current reading will result in electric charge QR, which will impact the ZVS transition. If we check the second criteria again, to achieve the sync ZVS transition, total QR should be designed as zero because electric charge with zero load has met the distribution requirement automatically. To make sure the total QR is zero, resonant current should be designed central symmetric during the daytime from T1 to T2. To achieve the central symmetric waveforms, we can regulate the switching frequency to make sure the resonant current IRT1 is equal to minus IRT2. According to the resonant converter principle, current IRT0 is equal to the minus IRT2, and thus IRT0 is equal to the IRT1, and the resonant current during T2, T0 to T1 is axisymmetric. Since the resonant current is axisymmetric during T0 to T1 and central symmetric during T1 to T2, this proposed method is named as the axis and central symmetry method. Due to the time limitation, the mathematical derivations are skipped and only the desirable switching frequency is shown on the right. With a given resonant frequency determined by the leakage inductance and the resonant cap, and a given dead time determined by the magnetic inductance and device output cap, the switching frequency can be optimized to make sure the electric QR is zero during the dead time. And with this optimized switching frequency, the second criteria can be achieved. And then the next question is whether this method is effective with different load. The voltage and current waveforms with different loads are shown in one cycle. Since the resonant current is proportional with output power, the higher amplitude of the resonant current represents the higher power. Check the sync ZVS transition. The waveforms during the daytime is zoomed in this page. When the output power increasing from no load to the rating power, the sync ZVS transition always can be achieved because both side ZVS starts and ends at the same time. It should be noted that the current reading is proportional with the output power. To meet the requirements of first criteria, the current reading should be smaller than magnetizing current. So the CLLC DCX should be designed at the rating power.
as shown on the right, the simulation and the experimental results without the sync CVS transition are plotted in one figure. The power in the simulation and the testing are the same as 18 kW. In this case, the first criteria is not achieved because the current IHV and ILV are both positive, and the voltage VDSLV will be clamped until the current ILV becomes zero. It can be easily seen that the current reading is larger and uh, the dead time loss will be generated because the current ILV will go through the body diode. CVS transition is achieved with the proposed ACS method. The simulation and experimental results with 18 kW are shown on the right. In this case, since the current IHV is in positive and ILV is in negative, the first criteria is achieved and both sides ZVS will start at the same time. Due to the ACS method, the second criteria will make sure both sides ZVS transition can end up at the same time as shown on the right. And thus, the current reading will be smaller and no daytime loss will be generated. To verify the load independent voltage gain, load changing test is conducted. You can see when the load is changing from the 15 kW to 1 kW, the output voltage keeps almost constant at 355 volts. In addition, the experimental results at the 11 kW is shown on the right. As you can see, since both sides VDS start and end at the same time, the sync DVS transition can be achieved with different load. The efficiency is measured by the power analyzer as shown on the left. And the total efficiency are plotted on the right after achieving the sync DVS transition. The peak efficiency at 18 kW is 98.8%. Compared with a no sync DVS transition, the total efficiency is increased by 0.6%. Finally, the conclusion of this presentation is shown in this page. The optimized sync ZVS transition is achieved with two design criteria. One makes sure the ZVS starts at the same time, and another makes sure the ZVS can end up simultaneously. With the sync ZVS transition, many merits are achieved, such as the natural bidirectional operation without the ZCD circuit and the load independent voltage gain. In addition, the peak efficiency without the dead time loss is achieved at 98.8% and the power density is achieved at 152 watt per cube inch. Finally, the ZVS and all switches have been achieved with the full load range. Well, thanks for your attending and welcome any questions and comments.